Don't make us who we are So I'll dream until I make it real And all I see is Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to the amazing Mentorship Monday with the amazing Marin and with me, Michelle. It's good to see you guys. Hi, Marin. Hello, Michelle. How are you? I'm doing so good. This was a really good week. It just feels it's it was a busy week, but you know those weeks where you have a good productive week, you get a lot done. That's how it feels. So I feel like yeah. I really accomplished a lot on my <laughs> list of goals this week. Yeah. Personal That's goals. That's really good. Mine, yeah. mine was the exact opposite. <laughs> okay. I've got um, the boys are in two sports each plus an instrument. So every day it's sports practice, instrument practice, Easy. sports game. It's just wild. So, yeah. um, so I just feel kind of like a little chicken with their head cut off every day, just running around trying to get everything done. Um, yeah. but I did manage to find, well, technically two days where I was able to like meditate and try to do the trans channel. But one was like, every time I would start, I'd be like, I'm in the zone and mom, I need you. <laughs> yeah, so, I I that. so yeah. um yeah so anyways um the uh one the first day I was able to like try it out and um I don't I feel like I hear Eric saying you did but I don't think I trans channeled I didn't get to that um step, I guess you could say, but I'm building a foundation. Um, yes. and that's funny cause I pulled the car after I did it. I was like, what is, you know, what do I need to know for today? And I got firm foundation. I was like, I am building the foundation. That's right. And that's but, what it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was really cool. So like I, you know, grounded, protected myself. I, I immediately first felt, um, some like an angel come in and say like I'm protecting you and I've mm -hmm. always protected you so don't be scared to do this mm -hmm. and then I asked Eric to come for and I was like okay Eric I want to try this with you and um I was like just I don't know what to do so just come cl really close like I don't know and um what is so interesting okay so I definitely felt him like always kind of like coming through the back yeah. and um but what was so different this time was there was this feeling and the, and it felt really good. Like uh -huh. it was a good feeling, mm -hmm. but I felt this feeling. And the first thing I remember thinking is this feels, this feels really familiar. Like I feel this feels like such a familiar feeling. And then the second um, thing I thought was like, this is a really good feeling. This feels really good. Like, I don't uh -huh. know how to explain it. Um, and I've only have like conscious memory of like feeling this feeling one other time after I gave Reiki to my husband and like the energy was just so high and it felt yes. so good. Yes. Um, and so I'm like, is this like, what in the world is this feeling? Is this, is this like the feeling of like heaven? You know what I mean? Is this, feeling of Eric, but I don't know why I would have been there for that Reiki session. Like, is this, why did it feel so incredibly good and so incredibly familiar? What is that? So have you heard the expression high on life? Have you heard people yes. say, I need no drugs because I'm high on life. Okay. So this is really what this is. It's connecting into your most natural state and it's connecting. Okay. So when Eric is accessing this state, it's really your vibration melded because we are all connected. There really is no separation. So it's more of an opening. So it's allowing an enhancement and it's actually releasing chemical in the brain. So you're releasing okay. like the dopamine, the feel good. Now, did you feel it through your whole body? Did you yeah. feel oh, the sensation? Yeah. Like, 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 yes. So I, what I like, would um, prefer, swimming in it. 
Okay, what I would refer to this as, and I've explained this to some people, the best, uh, I think, metaphor or way I could explain it, and tell me if this is how it felt. Have you ever had morphine? <laughs> Have you ever been hooked up to a morphine drip or for pain? Okay, all right. Okay, well, if anybody has, this is how I felt it. It was this warm, loving, very euphoric type energy that there's nothing attached. You're not. And now because I have in the past used prescription drugs and I have gone through, there is a certain sensation that I would feel and I'd never felt it before. Okay. Now, when I went through my addiction, that was uh, it. I never went back to that state because it, it's that's a whole other story. However, I never forgot that euphoric feeling when I began to work with spirit and started my meditation practices and got to these different states of awareness. That's the first thing that came to me is, oh, my God, this is what being high on life is. This is what that true feeling of connecting to the true self, of connecting to higher vibrational energy that is natural. And that's when I first began to understand that we can bring that energy into ourselves. Now, keep in mind, that particular feeling that you had would not be something that you could walk around and function in, right? Like, can you imagine... Mm -hmm that feeling how good it felt and just warm and euphoric but it's something that we learn to because we can access it through connection and it's always there it's always available to us but it takes practice to be able to access the energy within ourselves while we're connected in the physical body but because we are all we are all part of our soul so this is just a, a small bit of us, like a seed that is focused into this body. So it's like there is a great opening and it's amplified. So Eric amplifies that energy. And that was also to relax okay. you. Because what he's saying yeah. right now is it's it's like being hooked up to something, but it's natural. It's within you and it relaxes your body. And so you will find as you continue to practice with this, that sensation will come in. And that's really just to sit and be in that, to get comfortable in that space. Now, I have had glimpses of those spaces in my waking moments, but I also know that I can't get anything done in that state. <laughs> So it doesn't, for me, I've never yeah. had it last. It's like something that I can access in meditation. It's something that I can access at certain points for periods of time. But my set point from day to day to function as a human being is not there. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'll say like, you know, after a reading, you do get like kind of yes. flighty and feel good -y and like there's yeah. lots of love, emotion going on and whatnot. But mm -hmm. this was so much more. It was yeah. so, well, it was like I was like in a love tank. <laughs> like it was, yes. there was, I felt like there were boundaries to it or borders to it. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was like, I don't know, or like a perfume that is like, you know, surrounding you. I don't know it, but like an elixir. it was an elixir. Yes. And, but I definitely can see how you couldn't function at that. Mm -hmm. um, although I don't know, I'd like to try because it was really nice. But, um, <laughs> but yes, it, it's just so, so what, it, it's just that higher vibration. So is that what we feel when we go to heaven? Because like, I see why if you felt that way, you wouldn't, you know, want to come back because it's so. Yes. Like. Yes. And okay. um, think about um, near death experience stories, many, many stories that we've heard. And when a person has an experience where they understand that their consciousness is not the body, when they understand that there is a difference. um 
and they have that experience of going to heaven or experiencing that energy, many will describe it as this euphoric sense of love that cannot, like, because words, and even as we're saying this, and I know, Marion, you feel this too, words really don't give the proper description of how that feels. You know, we do the best yes, we can to try and, you know, yeah. give it. But this is something that is understood by the experiencer. And that's what most people are, what I'm being told right now is, we're here to find the access to that while having our human experience. And so when somebody has a near-death experience and they are home, coming back into the physical body can feel very depressive and very heavy. And you'll find that um, it may take a period of, of trying to process what's happened after that and almost a longing to go back to it. So many people that have had near-death experiences will go into this state of why am I, why am I here? I want to go back. I want to go back where everything felt so good, so safe, so loved. So yes, yeah. in, in everything that I understand, that would be the best example of how it feels to be out of the body and, and okay. in the light. Yeah. yeah. I even think there's more to it. Amazing. I do. I do believe that there's, I believe that there is, that that is a taste of it. I believe that it's, that it is a, a an even bigger energy, but that is yeah. as much as maybe we can access at that point in our body at whatever point we're in. Yes, I would agree with that. Um, okay. So then in the process of trans channeling, how far did I get? <laughs> did I? I mean, okay. oh, okay. So here's the other thing. I will. So I also got pulled out of that one, of course, because of my kids. Yeah. Um, both times I felt, I saw myself going, I saw a long hallway. Okay. Um, yep, that's good. Like either it looked like a tunnel or a hallway. And when I say a tunnel, I mean like an underground tunnel. Like I felt like yes. it was brown, like, like soil was mm -hmm. you know the tunnel and um and i was traveling down it and then mom and so so that's leave. that's really good actually that's an indication of um you're learning how to step your consciousness back so you're allowing yourself to take a back seat to allow another consciousness to take the front seat. So you're not removing yourself. And so that tunnel is a really good indication of the process. And so each time that you go in and the way it's being shared with me is that even the kids calling you is actually a purposeful to break you out of that state and reground you again, that that's not really something that's distracting. It, it's like a necessary part of it so that when you return, you have an idea of what it feels like, of what it is like doing it in these increments because it really is the consistency and the intention, the practice of doing, but I feel like being called away or having something has its purpose because Eric is just saying right now, um, allow that to just be, allow that to be and reground yourself. And when you go back again, you'll go a little further. You're going to have some very interesting experiences with this, but that, that is, um, okay. Eric says your consistent practice in meditation to begin with is why that took place because you do have a foundation. You do. And so in building okay. a foundation, he says, a house does not get built overnight, right? And yeah. so you've got your basement, he says, um, and the bricklayers are working right now. So the blueprints there, um, like everything's been yeah. decided about the shape of the house and all of that stuff. So you're just building all of the bricks. So you're in, you're in good state. Cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Well, it's interesting that you say that like there was something to me being thought of it from my kids because I actually think, I can't remember if it was the first time or the second time, but um, they, my son was, um, I, my office is in the basement and my son are like video games are in the basement. So if I'm in my office working, they'll get on video games and it's like, you know, moms down, like get scared of like being in the basement by themselves. But as mm-hmm. long as I'm here, they're fine. Yeah. But for whatever reason, when I did that, he ran in here and he was scared. He was like, I saw someone out there and it scared me. And he went into my office and I was like, like, and I immediately thought of Eric and I was like, well, he's supposed to be in, in me. So how, <laughs> how was he out there? <laughs> So, like, you know, how does that work? <laughs> the beauty of of the ability to split consciousness or to split, um, right. multiply yourself. And uh, goodness knows how he really does that, how that actually really works. We're not sure. But it was Eric. I know. Well, I felt, well, I felt like it was Eric. And then, yeah. um... And then I just, I don't know, like, I wonder if there's like something to like the more concrete he's getting for me or like that energy rate, you know what I mean? Cause like, that's the yes. highest I've ever felt with like that energy and that, yeah, like very amazing energy that it must've raised somehow. And maybe he got more physical for my son. I don't know. That's the, yes. kind of what I was thinking. Yes. And, and you're right because there is a, um, they're showing me a connection right now to and it's kind of how our reality, how it's not solid, right? It's not fixed. And so there's a reflection that's happening. Like what's happening in you is also happening for your kids because of, of that interconnection. Just in the way that when you had the experience with the hand, with the energy, that, you know, which one I'm talking about on the, I think it was maybe three episodes when you were talking about it, when one of the boys were ill. Oh, Not yes, sure. yes, yes. You, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of that same, mm-hmm. it's got that same thing, but there's this manifestation to it as well, which is also mm-hmm. um, triggering some of his, let's call it activations. It's triggering some things in his field because nothing that spirit does is a one time deal, meaning that whatever happens, there is uh, um, many layers to everything and how it affects. So there's really, that's why we, we say it's not just one truth. Like, yes, this is true for me, but it's also true for this and this and this and this. Because it's like piggybacking with messages, right? And when we deliver a message or say you're in a group and you're delivering a message to a group, you might be delivering that message to this one individual, but there's all of these rings of uh is how they're showing it to me is in in rings of messages within messages that are affecting all of these other people so it's kind of that same idea and that's how we're all connected right so everything has these also your pieces to it because spirit's very smart and they don't waste any energy at all (laughs) so that's pretty cool i truly yeah. yeah. Yes. So that was my thing. So thank you That's everyone great. for encouraging me to do that. And I will keep trying and um, we'll see where I get with that. I will say I've been like kind of also like practicing in my like waking day where like um, <laughs> um, I, ca- I can now that I've like, I, I know what that feels like. I think I can get back there faster. And so like, um, I've been, I don't know if this is related, but I feel like it is because it feels right. It's like, I've been zoning out more. So mm-hmm. it was funny. I, um, was playing basketball with my son. We were playing pig with my son. And so, you know, and he's got to like, he's like, okay, mom, and you're going to run three steps. Then you're going to turn around and then you're going to run three steps the other way. And then you're going to turn and shoot from behind. Can you do it? And I'm like, I don't know. Let me see. You know, like, So anyways, or he'll be like, can I practice three times before it's my turn to shoot the basket? I'm like, sure. So like, there's lots of, lots of downtime for me as the partner. Right. And right. so I've just got my basketball and I'm just dribbling it. And I think it was like the rhythmic sound. I went, it was like shuffling it from one hand to the next hand, yep. you know, like this. Yep. And, um, 
And it like immediately put me into like a zone out. Yes. And I didn't even realize I was zoned out just like to the rhythmic of the mm-hmm. bouncing of the ball. Mm-hmm. And my son had to literally, he hit me in the head with his basketball to like snap me out of it. He had been, he said he'd been calling my name yeah. and I was like, oh my God, I'm sorry. I didn't realize yeah. you were calling my name. Yes. So like that happened like a few yes. times since I started doing this. And so yes. I feel like I'm like, well, I can get there faster now or something. You know, it's interesting because as you say that, it brings me back to a lot of memories, even being a kid, because when I was um, when I was younger, like through my gosh, even up until early high school, I had a lot of experiences where I I would go into myself like because I, I knew I could access a, I will call it a space of safety within myself. So to other people, it would often look like I was dissociating or I was kind of out there, not really with it. But what I was actually doing was n- not understanding the language of what I was doing or really, you know, now I understand it. But I was going into this space and I would always have this image of the heart space, right? It would just be color. And I would step in that and and that would allow me to get this feeling and that's all I could explain it as as a feeling and I even remember being maybe grade three or grade four and trying to explain this to somebody that I was just going inside myself and I don't even know if I use those words and I just got teased terribly for all that kind of stuff but it's so interesting because those states that we go into we can access these states within our day to day by practicing it. And sometimes it just happens like, like the rhythmic, the rhythmic, like the rhythm of the basketball. Um, sometimes for me, it would be a fan in a classroom. That fan would go around and I'd start to kind of go rhythmic to the fan. And it would allow me to have some sort of a release, it would allow me to, to feel better. So that's really interesting that you say that because that's something that Eric has talked a lot in sessions to people about bringing their meditative state into different points in the day to um, to go inside, to release, to uh, say maybe move through a difficult hour period. And it doesn't mean that you're completely disconnecting from people and from the experience, but sometimes that's what we need to do. Sometimes there's a reason that we need to do that to allow ourselves to say cope through an experience in that way. But mm-hmm. it's interesting that you say that because um, that just brings up so many different ideas and uh, having the meditative state with us at all times. Um, it, there's different levels that we can access and the more that we practice with that the more fascinating our experience can be, you know, because really sky's the limit. It's, it's all experimentation and uh, it's, yeah, it's really interesting because I think you are definitely, well, I know you have hit another, um, the best word for is another level of experience. And you're bringing a lot of that peaceful energy. And wasn't that one of your intentions? was bringing more peace. Didn't we put that? I think we put that because that's what I feel. Yeah, I love that you know my intentions more than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely, because I know that's something we have talked about before, whether it was on camera or not, but bringing more peace into our experience and feeling more peace. Yes. So yeah, that'd be interesting yeah. to see how this plays out. Well, okay. So everything's, you know, uh, synchronistic, right? So then on, um, on Friday, I went to a sound bath. Um, it's a sound bath glow up party for girls and oh my gosh, it was so much fun. I would love that. Uh, But it was my very first sound bath experience. Like I listened to the singing bowls, like on, um, you know, insight timer and stuff like via, um, you know, all internet, like where you just have your either computer speakers or phone speakers or ear pods, completely different when you are in person in a sound bath. Those bowls are so powerful. 
Yes. And it is so cool. Um, I highly recommend finding a sound bath. I guess yes. the lady that does it doesn't it like yoga studios. So she did it in uh, my friend's home, but um, that was so cool. And I can totally, I felt cause I had already done the first two um, practices. And so then when I got to the sound bath part, I like could feel how that could take me there like really quickly. And, um, and I was like, oh my God, I can just see myself just going like this all day long with the little <laughs> singing bowl because yes. yeah, it's, that feels it can so take- good. It feels so good. Right. Yeah. That, and that's a yes. really good reset. Like I'll use, I have just a one little, one little bowl here, but I find like sometimes even just to clear my energy quickly or to, like, I love how it feels in the body. So like just hitting it. So we'll just hit it for a second see where you feel this. Like, see, cause if we set the intention of, is there any area in my body or any chakra that needs clearing or needs reset and see which area you feel it in. Okay. okay. Hit it one more time. Hit it. Did you feel that anywhere, or did you feel that I actually felt that up and down the whole space? <laughs> did you really? I didn't. I felt it coming at my ears and go up my eyes to my head, and then yeah. you were like, "Let's do it again." And it was the exact yeah same feeling. I felt it come up um, the heart. It went straight up. Like that. Mm-hmm. So maybe I like here below, like throat below needs to be cleared or something. Cause I'm only getting yeah. this. I don't know. Um, but, and then like whatever you guys felt in that moment, like it's like 200 times more when it's in real life and yes. the actual yes. like vibrations yeah. are hitting you it is yeah. incredible. And like the bulls were like on this side of me and at, which would be my left side. And then at one point, like my right ear even got like, it was like the vibration got like stuck in my ear. It was so cool. And then there were times where I could feel like, yeah, my whole body like vibrating up and down. And um, it was really, really cool. So I, they're very expensive. So yes. Yeah. Some of those crystal sound bowls and I like, they're just absolutely beautiful. And, um, there's different things you can do as well. Like sound is, sound is, is geometry, sound frequency. That is what we are. That is the language of the universe and sound does incredible things. So being immersed in it all around you in person, it, it can heal. It can, um, cause our cells are vibrating. So when you also put intention with it, it, it's like magic in the system. It can do so much. So that's really interesting. I would love sometime to um, have somebody come in that could really talk to us about sound bowls that does that. Maybe that would be great to, if anybody knows well, anyone. I've got her, no, I've got her card. Oh. The lady that was, that hosted the party. Okay. Yeah. We should have, invite her on so she can come on and talk yes. to us about what she does. And she's very interesting because she actually like um, specializes in um, um, like autoimmune diseases and like healing autoimmune diseases and somehow this. Yeah. So she's in America and guess what? Her business partner's in Canada. And I was like, oh, it's not a a little, a little coincidence, not coincidence. (laughs) Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, then I'll have to reach out to her. Um, but anyways, okay. So then super fun experience. And I was like, oh my gosh, I could do this every Friday night. This is so cool. Then Friday night I go to bed and I had the coolest dream. So, um, I just want to share cause I always share my dreams. Yeah. <laughs> so it was definitely a spirit dream. So, okay. I was at a school and there was this old, they brought in this very old piano and it was like, it just like looked like basically just like a wood pile. Like it didn't look good at all. Mm-hmm. And everybody was like, whoa, what would you do with that? And I was like, I think that that piano can play. 
And I was like, no, it can't play. And I was like, yeah, I think that this piano is like salvageable and it can play music. And which is so interesting, like the sound bowls and piano and it's like, you know, instrument. And um, so this old man who reminded me of like the grandpa in Charlie and a Chocolate Factory, mm-hmm. he um, was with me through the whole dream. So I definitely and then I woke up and there was a male ping. So he's like 100 percent of spirit. Um, he gave me a. Um, a. Um, Oh my gosh, what's a sander, a sander, like an electric sander. But this sander is like from his generation. Like it was like clunky and big and like you had to like push down to like, yes, yes. Okay. And, um, and so I'm like doing it and I'm like sanding the, um, the piano and I'm like, I don't know, it's not making like that much of a difference. He's like, here, take this one. And he gives me like a better one. And I like, I'm like, okay, like I really see it. And then somehow we bring it back to his house and I'm like sanding it and I'm sanding it. And then there's like this little like square in the piano. And as I'm sanding it, this, this like pocket, like it's open. I mean, I don't know, like maybe you would put like, um, like, uh, your music papers in it or something, you know, it's like that kind of a shape, like maybe like yes. a cubby shape. Yeah. And, um, and then all of a sudden something in there starts glowing And we were like, see, it does work. It is working. Like there's, it's coming back to life. And then, um, and then he was like, look, there's an ashtray. And it was this little bone China dish. And it was, you know, kind of like had like a little, you know, half inch edge on it or maybe quarter inch edge, like ashtrays do circle. And um, along the outside rim was like this gold inlay. Okay. But this was again, all tarnished, all like you couldn't see the gold inlay and it just looked like this tarnished old ashtray. Mm -hmm. But then this is so interesting. I had gum in my mouth and I have these, I have these dreams where I get gum in my mouth and I keep taking the gum out and there's just no, it just never stops. Like I'm just, Mm -hmm. just trying to take this Mm -hmm. gum out of my mouth. And, um, I think I've told you like maybe two or three times now about gum in the mouth dreams And, um, for me, they mean like, it's time to be like, you have to clear, you have to cleanse, like you, you're, you've got a block. And so he's like, put the gum in the ashtray. So I'm putting the gum in the ashtray. And as I keep putting the gum in the ashtray, the, like the tray starts to like, look like a bone china again. And the inlay starts to like sparkle and like, you know, like kind of like, it kind of like lights up a little bit. Yeah. And I'm like, it's working, it's working. And then, um, and then I woke up, um, unexpectedly from my dog and I really wanted to find the end of that dream, but, um, I know I keep getting interrupted this week. It's crazy. Um, but anyways, that made me think, oh my gosh, like, I think I need to cleanse my chakras or I don't know, like, what do you make of that dream? Isn't it so interesting about like the piano and like cleaning it and refurbishing it and here I am trying this new skill out than possibly is an old skill or like you know I'm I I don't know what do you think and that yes 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 and yes everything that was coming in is um is about the return to a state in a in a new way it's like bringing something that was uh we'll say in other lifetimes that is part of your soul is bringing it into this reality and you are going through a process i mean we all are of cleaning ourselves of getting rid of things that are not um we just don't need them like the ashtrays just the ashes the the over pieces things that we don't need of cleaning and it's interesting because the polishing and i'm sorry i have to show you this everybody might not understand this but marin will but this was like sitting uh, right to the left of me that popped out it says sound okay Oh my gosh. Because Marin and I were having a conversation for a few minutes before we recorded and these cards kept flipping out. They were like telling us a story and I just threw them down and this is not even the same deck, but this was just sticking out from the side and I just saw sound on the bottom. I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh so, my gosh. Yeah. So, um, but that's so what it you're doing. sounds like I'm going to be getting some singing bowls, huh? Yeah. So the, the piano right? So 
um, the piano that is uh, and with the sound bath and everything, there's a lot of um, for all of us, but specifically, you're being directed or guided to using frequency and using sound as a benefit to really move things along for yourself because you're very receptive to sound very yeah. receptive. and a lot of us are but it's it's just that this is what will do the best for you right now is to get into that sound and i feel a lot of expansion around that so like everything that we've been talking about has pulled in these pieces of sound and vibration to use for um for expansion for cleansing for the foundation that you are building right removing so the bricks that are building uh removing any of the debris from building so that you can get deeper uh into what is naturally there because that's what's happening <laughs> pretty cool that feels good <laughs> this is really cool yeah yeah. That's so cool. And that's so cool. It's so, it, gosh, it really helps. I can see why journaling is so important because yeah. each thing seems so isolated, you know, but yeah. then when you tell the story yes. and then it's like, how could that not all go yes. together? Like, and you know, it, you're exactly, so cool. yes, you're right on because the, um, journaling it, and, and it, everybody journals a little bit differently. I mean, I call myself the healing heart art because my healing journey comes a lot through artwork it comes a lot through that that is how i do things but i also um if i have a dream i write down the details that i remember and and leave it you know because i know that there's all these like you said isolated pieces that might seem isolated but when mm -hmm. you keep putting all these pieces together you build a story you build a foundation and you're able to look at it all laid out and many of us are very visual or feeling and it helps to see it that way to put that story together so journaling is wonderful it's a wonderful however you do it do you journal you may journal a lot mm -hmm. you might just put a little bit in there but it is excellent and you have a lot of pieces coming together right now <laughs> <laughs> quite a bit yeah oh my goodness yes okay so is there anything to then so whenever I get the gum and I can't get I have so much gum I have to get it out of my mouth I always know okay I've got to clean my chakras is there something and I feel like it's spring spring cleaning right mm -hmm. like we all could use this information is yep. anything that I should be do like is, do you think that was the true meaning it to clean to cleanse and clean my body are you because right you said like get rid of put the things you don't need in the ashtray is there things yeah. that I should be doing between my chakras and that other people could do too well I think that's part of it because like everything there's multiple messages in your dream there's a lot of different pieces um but I do think that adding sound for you to use to um, shed off energy that is not needed. So using because, sound to clear my energy. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. you can so, do that. Okay. Oh, so yeah. Interesting. Like when it was happening, and I feel like I always get blocks in the throat. So when it was happening, I felt like I needed to cough. And there was this point where I was like, oh, I don't want to cough. I don't want to like, you know ruin the like interrupt the music for the people around me and then I was like no I think I'm clearing something I need to cough and I coughed so yes. yeah very because interesting when I'm in session with somebody um sometimes like mediumship sessions it's it still comes up because it just does but or in healing sessions when somebody is speaking to me I can often tell where the blockages are because of how my body feels right so if yeah. I start to get that lump in my throat i know that there's something that we need to clear in that area or i might start to get a little bit of discomfort in the back of my head and i know that there's a little bit of clearing we need to do in that area so it's really good to pay attention to some of these things that are coming up like if you're chronically uh getting sore throats if you're getting um 
like a, a sore ear, if you have any discomfort in the stomach area, any bloating, you know, all of these types of things are, are uh, ways that your body is showing you that there is an energy center connected there that needs some attention. And using sound to clear it is a great way, especially if you have difficulty with visualization. So, um, you know, some people will say to me, oh, well, I'm just not, you know, I don't know what to visualize or I'm not really sure what I'm, you know, what to do with that. Uh, I speak to the chakras, but I don't really know if something's happening. Well, then try using sound. So, I mean, you could go on YouTube and pick up all kinds of different frequencies. They, you can do sound healing for cleansing the chakras and go through the different sounds and feel it in your body. Another great way, though, really, is to have your own bowl. And there's different, um, like, tuning forks. There's so many different tools that you can use. Bells. You know, you don't have to go out and spend $300 on a beautiful crystal bowl. There's so many different things that you can use. And the intention, remember, this is what the key is. This is the key to your car. This is the... The engine starter. It is the intention. What is it that I'm wanting to do? So if you don't know, if you're like, well, I don't know what needs to be cleared. Maybe everything needs to be cleared. Then go up each chakra and put your intention into that area. Um, same with your auric field. It's like, um, you know, use it and have the intention that you are cleaning the auric field. Now, here's the other key to it as well. And this is really good for everybody. All of these things that you're doing with sound, with um, whatever tools or practices that you're using, remember that the greatest way to assist those tools. So we can do affirmations, we can do sound healing, we can do all of these different activities and practices that definitely help, of course, with the intention that we have. But furthermore, what are you doing in between? What are you doing day to day, right? Because if you are, uh, let's say you're throat chakra, uh, you have problems in the throat, you notice that that throat chakra keeps coming up, keeps coming up, and maybe you've really worked on it, and it's a lot better than what it used to be, but you know that there's more. You might get into certain situations where it's really difficult to speak up. So what that is often connected to is to a mask, because we have many masks, okay? The world builds many masks, so the uh, meaning society, um, societal norms or trying to fit in or, you know, we may be really comfortable in one group of people because it's like minded. It feels really good. It's expansive. And then we shift over to, say, the day job that we're doing or to, you know, being with people that knew us from our past or like there's all of these different circumstances that can bring up that fear of I'm not sure I can be myself. And remember, this is often subconscious. Even if you have some conscious knowing to this, it's often very subconscious. So what you wanna do is you want to really, and this goes back to your healing work, who am I really? What do, What would I really want to say? So if you have a situation that you've experienced in this last while or something that stands out to you where you say, I wish I had have said this, this would have been more aligned with me. I wish I had thought of that in the moment and said it. Okay, so what you do with that is you rerun and, and take a moment, journal it, draw it, practice it, visualize it, whatever you need to do, rerun that conversation and say what you wanted to say. Speak it into existence. And then, because the body is not looking at, oh, they're not really in this circumstance they're, they're way over here, so they're just imagining it. No, everything is in the present moment. So if you put yourself into that experience, your brain, everything says, yes, we're back in that experience again. So you have, and this is how we get around time and space, right? So you have the ability to go over that and clear it. Now, part of that also is being able to 
represent yourself or be yourself to the best of your ability. And this is not a, okay, well, obviously I suck at this because maybe I, I, I don't feel comfortable being who I really feel I am in front of everybody else. Maybe I'm just not able to do that. Be very patient with yourself because even if you're able to express a smidgen of who you really are, celebrate that. Celebrate it. You know, if I want to wear my flower boots, really, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm like, I'm like, uh, she knows what happened. Okay. So after the sound healing or after the sound bath, um, he was like a holistic person. Right. And so we all introduced ourselves and I was like, do I say I'm a medium or do I just say I'm a speech pathologist? Do I say I'm a medium? Or do I say I'm a speech pathologist? And it's so funny if you were like, and if you're not ready to express that part of yourself. And then I kind of did what you did. I came up with like a, what I'm comfortable with. So I yes. said, I'm Marin. I'm a speech pathologist and I am on a spiritual path. And so this is all very interesting to me. And so I like, yeah. I gave them a toe. I gave them yes. a toe of what I am. You and, know? and that is so. to celebrate. That is amazing. Because okay, because I was like, why couldn't I say I'm a medium, you know? And but it, it just I don't think it was the, the right time or place. I think yeah, you know? and and that's your discernment, and that is okay. So, um, you know, on the spiritual journey, it is not I have to do it this way or I'm not this. That's not it at all. This is all about having compassion for yourself, and the spiritual journey is the journey. It's not really about reaching these goals and these, like, yes, all those things are exciting and it's exciting to manifest things. It's about the journey itself and celebrate the fact that you were able to express both. Celebrate the fact that you were able to express something that's very important to you and very personal. And, and often for many of us, our spiritual journey is so personal and we protect it. You know, we hold it so close to us because we don't want anyone else to taint it or toss it around or make fun of it or anything because they maybe aren't experiencing it or they don't understand it, but we do. And so when we have discernment, it's really knowing when it is the right time for us because it's not about them. It's not about making everybody else comfortable. It's what's most comfortable to me. But it's that idea in the back of your head that you have the intention that you're working on that. That's something that you're working on. And maybe there'll be times where, it, it, like, if that were a, maybe a different situation, there was uh, other people being very open about it, it would be totally comfortable to do that. Right? Like, to say, I am a medium, and these are the things that happened to me. But it wasn't that way. And I think that you selected the most comfortable as well as progressive moment. And you said it just the right way. So the key is to not beat yourself up. Really point out what is good about that because a year ago, would you have said that? Maybe not. No, Two years true. ago, would you have said that? No. So this is all about unveiling. And when we talk about fear, it's what am I fearing that other people will think of me? And that goes back to all kinds of things that we could get into. But but good for you, because that helps this, that helps everything, and the continued work on it. So that is exactly what I'm talking about. What are you being? What are you thinking? What are you spring cleaning in your life? What have I decided I'm no longer going to identify myself with? You know, um, maybe there's things that we get accustomed to agreeing with. We make agreements all the time in like stories and, and we get these certain sometimes from other people that just kind of builds in because it's easy and I don't want to, I don't want to make this person upset or I don't want to, but I don't really feel this way anymore. So your spring cleaning is really looking at your inner house the chakras, the why do I say what I say, and, and not to beat yourself up and say, well, I should be saying this. No, because awareness, once you have awareness, then you're able to make more intentional choices. 
So that was very intentional what you did. You put intent into that. You put thought into that. And so the best advice for your spring cleaning of everything is put a new routine, put something in, use sound because it is beautiful, it is cleansing, and it will help expand your experience. But back that up with being able to put your intention into the choices of the things that you say. Be intentional with your word. Be intentional with, does that really align with who I am today? And you'll feel that. If you ask that question, you will feel what doesn't align and what does. And then the practice is, what am I going to, so yes, I am a spiritual teacher. Yes, I am. You know, because the more and more you get comfortable with yourself, the more that reality solidifies on your journey and it moves on to something else. Make sense? I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. It was a I good really talk today. It. And I, I can't wait to hear how your meditation and what happens with you and Eric coming up. Cause I, I'm, I'm so excited to hear about it. I didn't get a chance to practice at all with them in that way this week. It was still a great week, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to try and do that this week too. No, okay. I'm not going to try. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. That's my intention. <laughs> all right. Okay. Like okay. Well, have a great week. Well, thank everybody. you so much. Yes, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next week. See you next week. See you later.